Hi, my name is Brian. Have you guys ever wondered why so many young adults are doing drugs now, specifically opioid-based painkillers that are prescribed at doctor's offices? <coughs> Probably not. But as an LA County healthcare worker, I've seen a lot of young adults uh, that come into my clinic for drug-related reasons. Most of these kids uh, are on narcos, morphine, heroin, and things like that, which are all opioid-based. Um, sometimes they'll come in with their parents, which is which can be very sad because they'll be on the drugs and they can't talk to you, so you have to talk to mom or dad. Um, they're upset, but they can't talk to their child because their child is completely gone. I can't talk to their child because they're completely gone. Not com like they're still alive, but they're not. They, you can't. There's no talking to them. They're they're uh, you like they're almost falling asleep on you. So I mean it's pretty sad you have to just talk to their parents get the history from them of course they're upset depressed um they want to you know send their child to rehab but unfortunately it's not necessarily their child anymore because they'll be like around from the ages of 19 to 28 so they'll be adults and i can't really force them to go rehab i can give them the options of where they can go but i can't we can't you know force the the, the actual addict to go if he doesn't want to so of course they get uh, even more upset because the I mean, dealing with that, and then if their child doesn't want to go, they're, where are they going to go? They're just going to live in their home or on the streets. Um, sometimes they'll come by themselves. Um, they'll come very depressed, extremely depressed. Um, they will just be craving drugs. They have sores all over their bodies. Uh, a lot of times, because once you get addicted to opioids specifically, you get very itchy. Well, not itchy, but when you're on the drugs, you tend to scratch yourself a lot. So they'll get all these sores all over their bodies. Um, and uh, usually, most of the times they tell me, a lot of this starts at the doctor's office, because maybe when they were a kid or something like that, they got in a car accident, or um, they broke their arm skateboarding or something like that, and they go to the doctor and they give them like a narco or morphine to help with the pain. Now, they don't necessarily get addicted on the spot, but they feel what it does, and in the future, you know, they start to crave that feeling again, and they look for it in, in the streets. A lot of them turn to harder drugs like heroin, such things like that. Or they just end up hurting themselves again, breaking their arm again on purpose just to go back to the hospital so they can get narcos or morphine. And you start to notice it after like the third or second time. Um, and so you're just like, okay, this person needs to um, be off it or we need to find a way to get them off it. So, I mean, to me, it started to turn into epidemic. Um, and uh, I feel like we, st we need to start using abuse resistant painkillers such as marijuana, which is a great option in my opinion. Uh, now many, many people think it is an addictive drug, which it is. I mean, it can be addictive, but it's nowhere near as addictive as opioid based painkillers. A lot of times opioid based painkillers are physically addictive, not like marijuana where it's more mental addiction. Uh, once you're physically addicted to something, when you stop, the withdrawal symptoms are extremely worse. You're vomiting, you're having diarrhea, you don't want to eat, you're losing a lot of weight, uh, your body is in pain physically. Um, now, with marijuana, you're just bummed out. Like, okay, I don't have, you don't, your body's fine, your brain is, everything's fine, you just, you just don't have weed or marijuana. So, um, a lot of time, like, there's just too many young people that I've seen in Southern California in general since I'm an LA County healthcare worker. I've seen way too many, so I just felt like, I mean, something needs to change. Um, in Orange County in 2018, about 1.5 million opioid-based, opioid prescriptions were dispensed to their residents. Uh, that was in 2018, and that was a while ago, but now I'm pretty sure it's much higher. Um, and that study was done from 2014 to 2018, so, I mean, it's a pretty big number and a lot of people are ODing of course which they do talk about about 14,000 people throughout those um, four years have OD'd that doesn't necessarily mean they died they just overdosed which a lot of times you can bring them back with an art can uh, which is provided at many clinics and hospitals too which is kind of sad as well because you already know there's a problem and you're just you know I mean, not much we can do though um, now, like I said, most of this starts in the, in the hospitals. Uh, they get prescribed these drugs, um, and then they start to turn to harder drugs, which is something that Dr. Stephen Ross uh, talks about. He's an addiction specialist. Uh, he talks a lot about how um, once you start to do these smaller painkillers that, that you get at the hospital, you start to want harder drugs like heroin. And once you start doing heroin, um, it's not like a pill. It's something you have to inject, which can destroy your body internally, externally, 
Uh, you get very itchy when you're on these drugs, so a lot of them will scratch themselves, they'll get these sores all over their bodies. They can't function without it, so as far as getting a full-time job or living at mom and dad's house for any time for a while, it's, it's not going to last very long, so a lot of times they'll just become homeless in the streets, have nowhere to go, extremely depressed, um, just because they're addicted to this drug. Um, now this is a really big problem because these young kids are, they're our future. They're like, I mean, I say young kids, uh, like I said, they're around like 20, 25, 28. Um, they're still pretty young and they have a bright future. They can go to school, they can go get a job somewhere if they just weren't on these drugs. Um, and that's why I say we need a uh, pain resistant or like uh, addiction resistant pain medication like, mar like marijuana. Um, in a survey, in a survey of medical marijuana patients in California who use cannabis instead of opioid-based pain medication, 80% found that cannabis was more effective than opioids for pain, and 92% found that the side effects of cannabis were more tolerable than opioids, meaning like the withdrawal and things like that. This was done by the BMC Harm Reduction Journal article exploring the use of cannabis and substance for prescription uh, drugs you know, to, to replace them. Um, now, the, there's many ways we can like get this going in our Southern California. You know, you can talk to your governor, send them letters, petitions, protests. Now, I don't know if that's going to be happening anytime soon, but you know, petitions and letters to your governor is something that you know. Let them know. Show they know the numbers. They know that people are addicted to this. They know that maybe they don't know necessarily that marijuana can be something they can use at the hospitals and at clinics instead of giving giving somebody opioids. Um, it can help, you know, lessen the problem, not completely solve it, but I feel like it can definitely help, you know, reduce this issue that I've been seeing. Uh, that's all of the time I have. Thank you so much, and hopefully this all makes sense.